you're with me. It's like a bad boyfriend, right? You're with me, but you're looking at the other girls. Yeah. Why is that happening? So you shouldn't be that excited. You should know how much better I am. So then that's on me. I have to work to create that connection with the dog. So the dog, actually what I want the dog to do is go, oh, hey, there's a person. How you doing? Nice to yeah. see you. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Dog Sense. I am Kathy Santo, and I'm here with my co-host, Sarah. Hey, guys. We have an awesome, amazing guest today. We have Nikki, one of the trainers from the school, joining us to go over um, some really awesome topics today. Yeah, Nikki teaches classes, and she does private lessons, and so she knows a ton about the topic that we're going to talk about because I think we get this question every day. Yeah. How do I stop my dog from, drumroll, jumping? <laughs> and it is a two-pronged answer really yeah the managing no rehearsal and then the training so we're gonna start with the managing part of it and then we'll jump into some solutions definitely so i find with the management and i think why i wanted to do jumping as one of the topics is because i get it almost every class whether it's a new person someone who's been here for a while puppies, private lessons, jumping is always something that people need work on. So that's why I thought it'd be great to talk about. Um, so management comes down to really just having the dog understand, well, really, you're setting something up to kind of prevent the dog from doing it in the first place, tethering and putting them in another room, utilizing your crate. Um, so those are really the first kind of few steps of what we want our, to see the owners do It's just to kind of put them away only so that way we're giving them the opportunity to not do it right because we always say your dog becomes more of what he does more yeah. of and mm -hmm. so while you're solving this problem with training you can't let it keep continuing because right. they get better at it and the better they get the harder it is for you ultimately to stop definitely it becomes mm -hmm. addicting too it's fun i yeah. find that dogs jump one because it's allowed that's the biggest thing and again we're not saying you're allowing it we just have to teach you guys to know how to one manage it and then train out of it um so jumping's fun for dogs right they get everybody gets riled up they're getting touched no 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 fluffy don't do that don't do that <laughs> or oh i don't mind your guess right oh it's okay we yes. jump something yeah. we're like it is not okay it's not okay well, I was going to say, so also, I think one of the big things to start with, too, is why do they jump, right? They don't come to us knowing how to jump on us. Well, guess what? When your cute little dog was a puppy and they jumped up on you and they were so cute and you just want to love on them, right? That's where they learned this behavior. It was a rewarded behavior. They put their front paws up on you. You could pet and scratch them when you're out on a walk or they are visiting new people. They practice this behavior. They learned, this is what I should do when I say hello to someone and I want to get pets, right? If I jump up on them, they're going to pet me. So that's one of the, if we want to nip this in the bud from the beginning, Beginning, that's where we start right with puppies we do not let them learn to say hello to someone i should jump on them and then i'll get, then i'll get petted i'll get affection and a big piece of that is rewarding calm right mm -hmm. like when they're really super cranked about getting out of their crate that's an opportunity when they get out to jump on you because they're not thinking clearly so you want to make them calm when people want to greet them and they're like oh puppy like we're like you need to stop yeah <laughs> you need to calm yourself down and of course in the training we teach the dog to do things that we want in high levels of arousal when they're super excited they still know how to do it but in the beginning you can make your life so much easier by just teaching them hey you know what never do it at all right Yep. I think also a big part in what you were saying, Sarah, is that it's almost, and I've been using this a lot with some of my students, we're almost indirectly rewarding them where they do jump up. And even if you don't want them to, but you kind of just like start petting them, like just stay on the floor. Cause I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're trying to pet them back to the floor. Right, you're trying to pet them back to the floor. <laughs> and they're like, oh, jumping gets me pets. Awesome. Yeah. And yep. we see this in class to the point where I've had students and I know you guys have too. I know exactly what you're going to say. So they're sitting they're there. on the lap. They're on the lap and they're just like, well, I really don't want my dog to jump. Meanwhile, Fluffy is on yeah. the lap. Yep, exactly. 
<laughs> it's creating that awareness in the yeah. owners about what you're yeah. actually doing that you're unaware of that is creating more of a problem. Right. And one of the top things that I tell my puppy students, because a lot of times there's social pressure, you know, the neighbor wants to say hi to the new puppy. I stand on the leash, right? You can say hello. I tell them, hey, listen, we're practicing not jumping. You can say hello to him, but I'm going to stand on the leash where he's got about six inches so that he can't rehearse the behavior of jumping on you. He might try. He might hit the end of that leash. But if I'm standing on the leash, he's not being rewarded by getting all the way up and getting those front paws on the person. So that's a quick one for management that you can do if you get in a situation where someone wants to say hello to them and you feel uncomfortable saying no, stand on the leash. They can say hello as much as they want. The puppy will not be able to jump on them. Right. And can we also talk about making yourself better than the environment? Like, I don't want my dog to be so excited to see people. So they can be like, oh, hey, but they have to know that the best part of the day is with me yeah. and not greeting people and having that drive. So building value for yourself is something you do on the side, but it also helps us jumping. Definitely. Okay. All right. So we've got covered um, for puppies, how to prevent them from learning the behavior. But inevitably, sometimes we might rescue adult dogs or have clients where, again, they didn't know better when the puppy was younger. So now we have an adult dog or whatever teenage adolescent dog who's jumping what are some of your guys's top tips for managing the different situations that owners might be in right so someone comes to the door um uh counter surfing those kind of things so in those different situations how can owners best manage it i think the management itself is kind of the same as puppies right because whether you get a rescue dog an older dog whatever it is you kind of always have to bring back some of those um, those skill sets, essentially, by managing them in the same way. You might not put an adult dog in an exercise pen. Right. <laughs> you might want to stick with a tether or, you know, a crate or behind a baby gate is also a great one. Um, and I think we can also start to get into how do I teach my dog actually how to greet people? Because that's yeah. the biggest one. It's like, yes, we can manage, but we also need to get into the training aspect of it. Where and, to, and it takes some time to get the skill sets of a down weight or going to you know, a raised cot bed like right. place and knowing that there's a boundary and structure involved. So what I tell a lot of my students to do is start doing ready, ready, catch. Yes. And that way the dog is understanding that this word ready, ready is followed up by a treat. And maybe if I know I'm getting a treat, I'm offering you a sit because those things tend to get rewarded a lot more than just yeah. saying hi to the new person. Mm -hmm. Hand targets are also a big one for me mm -hmm. where I like to work hand target greetings with other people because like Kathy was saying, I do want the dog to be able to know how to greet people, but I also want to reel them back into me and let mm -hmm. them know that I'm the best thing. So it's a quick touch, but back to the handler. And when we're talking about management tools like the X pen and like gates and tethers, I find a lot of people don't know how to teach their dog to accept those right. foundational and it can be a lot of frustration issues, right? How to accept those foundational pillars in our training. And mm -hmm. so we have to teach the dog before we put them in an experience where there's somebody coming in, we want to say, hey, this is an X pen and like you can be in it and I can be here and you get awesome things. Same thing with the tether. A lot of people just pop their dog in an X pen and then right. go answer the door. And now the dog right. is super cranked and can't handle it. So all of these tools that we talk about have to have their own little subset of training before you use them in the moment. Definitely. Also, all right, so, yeah, go ahead, Nikki. Sorry, I just wanted to say one more thing about when people are coming over. Kathy's always talking about rewarding neutrality and calmness, where I know a lot of people are like, oh, grandma's here. Did you know that grandma's here? And they're hyping the dog up. So you're setting the dog to have no impulse control when you're giving them this, oh, someone's right. here type of response. So it's just like, oh, grandma's here. It's cool. Right? Go to your crate. <laughs> right. How can you contribute to that calmness right. bank right. by being calm, not Definitely. by being cranked? All right. So anything else that we want to cover in terms of teaching how to appropriately greet before we get into then, okay, so the dog is jumping. How do we correct it? How, how else can we teach it best? I do think there's a lot of stages in going to actually greet someone where if I have my guest, let's say six to 10 feet away, mm -hmm. and my dog's pulling to go get there. What I'm not gonna do is allow the pulling to go to the mm -hmm. person, because that's again, indirectly rewarding them to want to have no impulse control to go see that person. Mm -hmm. So I wanna make sure that we're at least walking up calmly, maybe yeah. I can get a sit. And then from there, as I'm gonna have my dog go see that person, I may even put some high value treats on their nose, 
not kibble or, you know, rice cakes, maybe something a little bit like chicken or roast beef. So their head is facing me and getting mm -hmm. treats from me. And it gives the person the opportunity to kind of scritch the dog because that's what the humans want. Um, right. Just scritch the dog on the butt a little bit and give them a little, you know, a little, a little bit, a little bit. And then we move out. <laughs> Yeah. And as always make sure you don't stay at the party too long. <laughs> Return back to me. <laughs> I mean, and the reality is some dogs are naturally, wow, and some dogs are a little bit nervous, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's probably a conversation that's not this one about dogs who are nervous and how those greetings look. Right. But I would say that if you had the experience that Nikki was just saying where the dog is super excited to greet somebody, that would be a note to me. And I would be working on how to make my dog not think that's so great yeah like why do you think you're with me it's like a bad boyfriend right you're with me but you're looking at the other girls yeah. why is that happening so <laughs> you shouldn't be that excited you should know how much better i am so then that's on me i have to work to create that connection with the dog so the dog actually what i want the dog to do is go oh hey there's a person how you doing nice to yeah. see you okay mom exactly <laughs> a lot of times that's the step that people are missing is they go they have the overexcited exuberant dog then they immediately want to go right to oh now you have to be calm maybe for a couple of weeks you're practicing just walking past people without saying hello. Let's create a neutral response. Let's build more value for me. And let's just walk past people without greeting. We're going to go on a greeting diet for maybe two or three weeks where you don't say hello to anyone. Then once we have a neutral response, once you see the other person, you do look back to me instead, then maybe we go into, all right, let's try some slow greetings. Let's try ask the other person not to do anything. Let's just walk up to them. Those kinds of things can help the dog get to the mindset that you need at the greeting without asking for too much too soon. And I'd like to just point out the people I want my dog to meet in that stage are boring. Yeah. Yep. They don't exactly. have bumps. They're not jumping up and down. They might be a little bit like, ooh, a dog. That's exactly what <laughs> to me. And a lot of my students who are trying really hard to have these social interactions with people right. that are neutral, they know that there's some people they're like, you know, if I know, you know, Aunt Susie's coming over, I'm not having my dog out because they sabotage and they don't right. care that they jump. Right. They're almost amping the do dog yeah. up more when you're trying to say, hey, keep it calm. So if you have people who can't follow direction. Maybe the dog's not feeling so great today. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> he's has a somebody. stomach virus and he's <laughs> vomiting <laughs> everywhere. So he's going to be in the crate. Everybody's like, yep, keep that away from me. <laughs> he's really talking right. just a good session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. All right. So now, okay, so what happens now the dog is jumping on the person? How do we properly communicate with the dog that that's not what we want them to do? Well, first of all, you accept that it was your fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we well, the dog jumped, he did something wrong. The human did something wrong. You screwed up. <laughs> so, oh, yes. Uh, so you take your hand and you go, oops, my bad. <laughs> Make a little note, memo to me, pay better attention. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes it happens to you. You the think open you're door by policy. yourself. Oh, talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. So the open door policy is a lot of people do have people coming in another house all the time. So it's mm -hmm. hard to manage your dog if you don't know when people are coming over. Mm -hmm. So I put, I tell my students, well, you got to be strict with the people, right? If you're going to be strict with the dog, be strict with the people. Let yeah. them a five minute text heads up. That's all yeah. I need, right? Uh, don't ring the doorbell. You know, let me come and get the door first. So, yeah. you know, just lock the door. <laughs> Yeah, stack the deck in your favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I, I know what you're asking. You're on a walk, right? And maybe you're bending down to pick up your dog's poop, or right? Tie your shoe, right? And you have the leash, and you're thinking your own thoughts about, oh, I hope this bag doesn't have a hole in it. And all of a sudden, your arm is jerked out of the socket because you didn't realize your foot slipped off the leash, even though you're still holding it. Good thing. Uh, and they're lunging to jump on somebody who's probably encouraging it, like, oh, dog, right? right? And you just missed the whole thing. So this is where the collar grab really, really helps. And that's a foundational game that we teach. We teach our dogs to think that when we grab their collar, it's awesome. Literally, it's the best thing. The example I would say is, it's like if I went up to somebody and grabbed their shoulder and gave them a hundred bucks, right? Then eventually when I grab their shoulder, they're like, yay, that's come my on, shoulder. give me my yeah. money, right? So that's the kind of yippee response. Once we have that, we can use that to guide the dog away from the situation. And then we pretty much let go of the collar, but not with a long leash. And see, dog, right. are you going to pull towards them again? Oh, you are? Okay, we're going to back up a little more, hold you a little more. Then we're going to let go again. So we're really, and I think this is where people go wrong. They make a correction. They make a, an adaption of what they're doing. And then they don't test it. 
Right. It's like yeah, a Disney so. movie. They're like, I did it, so it worked. It's, it's good. Yeah. yeah. And that's a time thing, but you got to test it and see what the yeah. dog understands. And another thing that you can do on top of the collar grab, which is great, is almost um, a body block on the move is what I call it. So you're almost physically turning back into the dog like they're going forward. You just got to cut them off a little bit <laughs> and walk them <laughs> the other way. Just so that way you're almost telling them with your body language that that wasn't the right choice. Mm -hmm. But then we walk up to the distraction again, depending on the body language of the dog and the situation. Maybe we go a little bit closer and then I have the opportunity to be on the offense and reward mm -hmm. you for not jumping. Yep. This is where that slide cookie turn slide cookie game, turn. slide cookie turn wins the day. It's just a way of reorienting your dog quickly yeah. and happily. All right. So that's for if they jump on someone else. What are your guys' best tips for if they jump on you? Shuffle. <laughs> Shuffle, yeah. Shuffle. yeah. You know, the little, your feet are on the floor and you're like shuffling. I'm not talking stomping. We're not talking, trying to crush dogs. Um, we're holding the leash because if you don't hold the leash and you shuffle, they run away. Uh, you shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And you do your little like, oh my gosh, I love this. It's so much fun. And they're like, holy hell, you're like coming into my space. I really don't love that. And then again, just like I talked about with the collar grab, yep. then you ask them if they want to jump up again. Yeah. You pat your legs. You're like, oh, I want to do it again. And they're like, I don't think so. But if they do, you shuffle a little bit longer. Yep. And then it's usually two to three reps and the dog is like, I believe. Yeah. And there are some dogs like I know some really, really exuberant labs are like right. shuffling. Yeah, they like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So there are some dogs where maybe you want to take a carabiner clip and, you know, stick it to something super sturdy. Um, so you're creating separation because when the dog does jump on you, we can ask, why are they jumping on us? They want in our interaction, they want more fun. They're in right. a state of high arousal. So if we're very, very consistent by saying that if you jump on me and the shuffling gets you more cranked up, mm -hmm. I have to find a different response. So maybe that's by adding separation, because again, what they want in that moment is your interaction, your engagement. Mm -hmm. So if they say, when I do this behavior, it ends up in, you know, and why? Well, that behavior doesn't work. Maybe I should try right. to sit. I got less of what I wanted. Got less of that. what I wanted. Now, exactly. this is a great thing to do when you're on a walk. Yes. Because you're on a walk and you're like getting mugged by your dog. And I like, had this exact one of my students. I was so proud of her. She was freshly new to me. Her puppy was only five months old. And she is great about going to field trips and building engagement with the dog, mm -hmm. practicing neutrality around all different things. And she stayed at the party too long. And this dog got a little bit too overtired and started jumping and getting really silly. And she goes, I didn't know what to do. So, you know, you always said to have a carabiner clip. Yeah. I forgot the reason why. She goes, <laughs> I carabinered her to the tree and walked away. Everyone looked at me like I was crazy, but then she just laid down. And yeah. she realized when I came back, and it was only two or three minutes that she left, right. me, obviously still keeping her eye on her. Yeah. She but wasn't she was, across the street. Yeah. She was just like, oh, okay. It was just a little right. time out, right? She and needed just, to just calm herself. Just a decompression. <laughs> Zen moment. And the woman might have been contributing to the dog's excitement because yeah. she was nearby, right. not by anything she was doing, exactly. but the excitement of mom, mom, mom. So just like a toddler, sometimes they need to just decompress. Definitely. All right, guys. So I think we've got management, obviously, is the first step, right? Prevent your dog from rehearsing the behavior. Then we need to teach appropriate greetings, right? At this stage, the dog most likely thinks they're supposed to jump on people, right? They get pets. They genuinely need to be taught what they should do when they say hello to someone. And then we have um, how to properly communicate with the dog. If they do jump, that's not what we wanted. Try again. Um, anything else you want to cover for jumping? I think that's a that lot. That was pretty good. That's Remember, self-aware. Be self-aware. And be proactive. And yeah. Be proactive. Yep. Yeah. Your dog is a reflection of you as a trainer. That makes people cry. Yeah. <laughs> and, and drink. It's okay. <laughs> but that just helps you be more aware. Because if you've taught them to jump and you have, good job, you can teach <laughs> them not to jump. Exactly. And it's just the same process in reverse. It's always an offense versus defense, defense thing. Try to be more on the offense because defense is adding in those things to tell them that what they did was wrong. But offense is not allowing them to do it in the first place. Yep. All right, guys, as always, if you enjoyed this episode, um, we'd love it if you'd like, rate, subscribe, tell a friend, share this episode somewhere. Um, our goal is to continue creating an awesome community of dog lovers and learners. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye, guys. Bye.